Well, tonight on our special focus on careers, as part of this week's focus, in fact, on Nightline, we are looking at avionics. This career path, we're told, according to my producers at least, offers many exciting opportunities for aviation enthusiasts. But what does an avionics engineer or technician actually do? Tell us more about this. I'm joined by Mega Aero Training Academy sales manager Ashley Stark. Ashley, very good evening to you. Let's start with the basic question of when I get home and say to my mother, I want to take up a career in avionics, what am I talking about? So in avionics, you need to know that there are different trades involved in this. Um, there's an avionician, which is made out of three trades. You get an electronic instrumentation and then your radio radar engineer. So what that entails is that's the guy that's working in the cockpit, that's the guy that's fixing your instrumentation, anything inside the aircraft that's got to do with electronics. Um, the work they perform is generally the line on the runway, aircraft comes in, lands, he fixes it, and he go, takes it out. You get another type of avionics engineer, whereas if the instrumentation is not fixable online, it gets sent to a workshop, and then a uh, category uh, X engineer will then fix it and overhaul it and send it back. Talk us through then the academic requirements. Walking into a university, do I go to any regular university, or is there a special school where one can go to take this up? Yes, you can come to our school, for instance. <laughs> uh, the basic requirements is pure maths and science at a matric level. Um, unfortunately, maths literacy is not acceptable. But luckily, so that puts me out then, because <laughs> I'm a maths person. Well, luckily, you know, you can go do your N3 matric or uh, your maths at any other college that's approved, and then you qualify to come and do this with us. And in terms of the, of the uptake, when you look at the various people who come through, is it still a predominantly male course that you, in the intake? Unfortunately, yes, it is. Um, luckily, over the last few years, we've seen a lot of females come through. Um, in our institute, uh, our last four or five years, our top students has been females. Uh, we're vicious, and we're no longer accepting the fact that it's a man's world, and we're making it ours. And what about uh, racial transformation because apart from men and women we also need to see more black people in fields such as this don't we yeah you know I don't think in the aviation industry because it's such a niche industry we don't really see that a lot you know people are there for a reason and the skills that needs to be applied um, the people that go there have a passion for it therefore they work together really well um, in aviation we don't really on the floor uh, under engineers we don't really have that big racial gap so it's quite a, a good mix then yeah. but in terms of exposure I mean I've not heard about the phrase avionics itself how much word is out there about these careers because when I think of planes. I think of the pilot. I think of the air hostesses. Yes. Um, look, uh, this is why we are here. Um, avionics, like I said, um, it's perceived as a difficult trade um, because of the academic standard that it's at, um, which is what we're trying to change. We're trying to encourage the youth to keep their maths and science subjects um, because this will open more opportunities for them. And then, you know, we're hoping we're involved with STEM, um, uh, which is the Science, Technology and Engineering Organization, to also encourage the youth to stay, you know, with these subjects and help them and make them aware of the different career opportunities that will become available to them when they stick with us. Given then how niche this is, I'd imagine that it's not very difficult to secure student funding for those people who want to get involved. No, not at all. Um, it's, it's also not cheap, mm. you know. Um, it's three years of studying on the job training. Unfortunately, you know, funding is limited. The CAA has been um, funding more and more over the years, and TETA has been given grants to us. So that's really been great, but it's still not enough. We need more. All right, Ashley Stark, thank you so much for being on Nightline. Sure, thanks. All right, that was Ashley as part of our career focus this week here on Nightline. And